so now we're out on this road obviously you can see there's a bit more traffic and it's like um, a shortcut so trucks will take it. there's a big truck coming past now but they'll take it you know so no you know it's like when I've been out in America and Canada and other places, they, like their roads are a lot different, you know, they're much wider, bigger, there's more room um, and like that. And when we get visitors come over to see us, you know, sometimes they'll call in if they're visiting Europe and people we know on the, you know, internet that follow us, they'll come and look at they can't believe how tiny the roads are. <laughs> you know. We never hold up the traffic, um, they're perfectly right when they say that you, you mustn't wave them on. No, you mustn't because then it becomes your responsibility. But what you can do is accommodate them and, and, you know, in the best possible way you can. You've got to share the road. You know, we don't own the road just because we're driving horses. You've got to give horses every chance you can, obviously. And there are laws to say how hey, you pass horses, etc. Or certainly guidelines anyway, if it's not law. But as long as we are, you know, if we get more than one or two cars behind, we look for somewhere where we can... So we might be travelling in a normal way here, for instance, like that, on a stretch of road like this. So if we hear a motor car behind, I'll come here, right, and cloud will go right into the edge of that earth there you know forming the side of the road so then they can make their own decision as whether they come past or not but we can come over here also you get um you know some people i, I don't want to say things that are but some people horses are not trained perhaps as well as they could be and they would react to that you know although we're over this side of the road so we're well off the middle of the road that pole would represent the middle of the road you know if we was there if I, I mean, if we put them out here there and straighten them up there that's the middle of our half of the road we've not crossed the white line we're not over in, in oncoming traffic or anything that's there but if we put it over here it gives you a better idea the pole just how close the pole is to the side of the road look can you see you know real tight to the side of the road giving another four foot that side that if they choose to go past it's up to them but it's our horses are trained that you know well it's my passion it's all i've done all my life really is i've had to do other jobs to make ends meet and you know and now we had more horses than you know, on a great big waiting list of all she's want to come in and be trained but it's been um i don't know how you'd say it's been a i've loved every minute of it freezing cold days pouring down the rain lovely summer days you know when we might go out in the evening and drive a team of horses and go to the pub out in the countryside and you know have our supper even with all she's tied up along the wall and then come home, lovely, I mean obviously, but I'd, any single, as long as I've got the reins in my hand and I'm sat up here, I'm the king of England as far as I'm concerned. Used to make me laugh when I was younger, in some ways I'd work for people, you know, driving their teams of horses, pairs, a lot of teams, but pairs of horses and four in hands and that, you know. And I'd drive them while they was working up the city of London, earning all the big bucks, so they could afford the big house and the stables and the carriages. But I'd drive them more than they did. <laughs> Get paid for doing it. It all seemed a bit daft really, but there you go. And some of them people I work for, um, you know, I'll do two days here, three days somewhere else like that. Um, I'd know their horses inside out. Obviously, if you're interested, you learn, you. You know, you want to understand the horses and see the way they're... What I try and do with any horse, and it's been a lifetime 
trying to get it right, I still ain't got it right, yeah, you know what I mean, you're still learning every day, the day you think you know it all, you know nothing, you know what I mean, as soon as you block your mind to, to being open to, <coughs> you know, looking at something a different way, there's your good baby. But I've never, I've never closed my mind. I've always been open to learn, you know, and want to learn. Um, and sometimes you can learn things off of people that you wouldn't really think, well, without being disrespectful, it's dubious to whether they should own a horse in the first place. But they'll come up with an idea that they've used. And I'll think, so that's happened two or three times, you know, and I'll think, so, quite, that's so clever. You know, what a brilliant idea. There's loads of things we do when horses call what we call cold shouldered, don't want to get into the collar and go to work. Loads of things we do. The reason I don't mention them, you know, they're not secrets in any way. But when you tell someone what, you know, how you do something, they will abuse it or can abuse it. Even if they don't intend to abuse it, they'll abuse it which in turn abuses yours. It's like one thing, for instance. I used to I talk like loads of horses. It's not hard to do. It's not a mystery or anything. But to keep their back feet where they are when they're standing in the show ring and walk forward with their front feet. Hence, their back legs would slope down like that with a tail between the ox, yeah? And they set their head in the correct position without having all them side brains nonsense on them. You know, and they would just be like that. You know, and they like they just show themselves off. It, it, it defines all the muscles in the back, their back, and the back legs, etc. Um, hackneys do it, don't they? But the Welsh cobs, you know, and, well, anyway, really will do it. So I used to, you know, teach us to do that, and all you had to say to it was give it the command, you know. I asked it the question, oh, I want you to do this, and away they'd go and stand like that. Well, I'd done it for a fellow with a beautiful coloured horse. I mean, it was a lovely looking horse and a very good stepper, high stepping horse. This is a good few years ago. Um, and obviously, to stand like that, it's all right for a little while, but it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Any stance that you take, if you stay in that position long enough, you're going to ache, can't you? It's going to be uncomfortable. <coughs> so I'll train this horse anyway to do this. And the fella had the horse home about, I don't know, not long. And his wife was very, became very ill, you know, very, very ill. And he had to spend a lot of time with her. So he had to get rid of the horse. And the horse was his pride and joy, you know, but he just did not have the time even to look after it. She needed 24-7 supervision, you know. Um, so that was no good. So he sold it to a fella. And uh, the fella he sold it to had it outside a pub on a Sunday morning. He was in harness in his vehicle and he told him, give him the command. You know, asked him to take up his stance and he left him like that for an hour and a half and the horse didn't move but wanted to and if he went to move he went oh you do and you know he'd stand there well that weren't right was it because you know anyone standing in a position one position it's like if I asked you to stand on one leg for instance for an hour and a half you wouldn't would you be uncomfortable if I asked you to stretch one foot right out one foot right back and stand there for an hour and a half it would be uncomfortable, well, the same for a bloody horse, isn't it? No different. So you have to be careful with them sort of things. And there's loads of things we do to get horses, you know, to do what we want them to do, what we ask them to do. And we've found over the long, long time ways of getting them to do it. It doesn't hurt them. Because you see, as soon as you hurt or smack it, whack it, or hurt it doing anything, why would it want to do it again? It wouldn't, would it? It'd bloody hurt, wouldn't it? That's what they're going to say to you. So if you saw someone to pick up, you know, like, like, you know, a piece of metal's just been welded, I don't know, or burnt with a burning thing, you know, and you ask to pick it up and it burns your bloody hand, you don't want to pick it up again. You, you're going to be very 
dubious of doing that. Well, it's the same for all, isn't it? You know, and he goes, fuck you, I don't want to do that again, that hurt, you know? <laughs>